A century ago, these Indonesian adventurers set sail. Brave seafarers from the southern tip of Sulawesi, the Buddhist pirates of legend. What drove them from the verdant hills of their homeland, we may never know. Nor will we comprehend what inspired a band of them to settle on a tiny coral island, many nautical miles from the fertile shores of Java and Bali, and to stake out a claim on the place they called a Grumin Basar. Approximately 300 kilometers east of Surabaya lies a miniature archipelago within the greater Indonesian archipelago that is called the Kangian Group. In the midst of its coral formations lies a tiny island called Pagarunan Besar. By 1990, they were a settlement of about 3,500 people under 700 roofs. The developed world would call their modest plots of beans and cassava subsistence agriculture. Trade was based on barter. My beans for your fish, milk for vegetables. Predominantly Muslim, raising their families and watching the seasons pass. The elite of the island are the boat builders, whose skills handed down from their Bugis forebears enabled them to fashion the crafts which fishermen take to the sea, hoping to return with a catch to add vital protein to a limited diet. A good fisherman could take home a dollar for a day's work. And if the harvest is too plentiful to eat fresh, well, dried fish is better than none. Sometimes they can harvest a whole school of fish. In a tiny building whose flimsy walls make education a communal experience, a teacher attempts to harvest a different kind of school. The children of Pagrunan absorb knowledge like tiny sponges. But teachers are few. School only lasts through the sixth grade, and students who want more than the island's classrooms can offer will someday soon leave, perhaps never to return. Yet Pagrunan has its charms. Its people know the seasons of rain and drought, planting and harvest. The storms and calm of the seas which surround them. They know days of festivity and celebration. But in the truest sense, for almost 100 years, change has passed over Pagrunan Basar. In the mid-1980s, the world discovered that this tropical backwater had something precious, natural gas. In 1990, change came to stay. Pertamina, the Indonesian state oil and gas company, and its production-sharing contract partner, Argo Indonesia, came to tap the potential of the gas reserve, which took its name from the tiny island which would be their base, the Pagrunan Field. As most students of economics know, where hydrocarbons are found, money follows. In 1991, Pertamina Arco arrived to purchase part of the island to support the Pagrunan gas project. Too young to participate in these momentous events, the children of Pagrunan will be directly affected by the decisions their elders make and the actions they take here today. The price offered is fair, a good return for a fallow, unpromising land. The deal is accepted. This day will be a watershed in the island's history. The traditional barter system will soon give way to 20th century economics. What was once rare now seems plentiful. Ready cash. Argo Indonesia established a subsidiary, ARBNI, to oversee progress and administer the project on behalf of Arco and its partners British Petroleum and Bimantara Duta Samudra. The project, which will tap the gas field lying in the Kangian group of islands and bring it to a central processing facility on Pagrunan, requires some 60 hectares on the eastern end for Wellside PGA. The plant and support facilities 
and an additional 10 hectares for well site PGB and the right of way to reach it on the western end of the island. The land Pertamina Arco purchased was the poorest on the island, almost useless for cultivation due to the coral substrate and frequent outcroppings of coral nodes. In 1990, clearing and enabling works began. The prime contractors began work, clearing the site for the gas processing facility and all the structures necessary to support it. Coconut palms are plentiful on the island, and the felled trees are used as building materials where feasible. Other workers began drilling post holes and laying out the temporary camp buildings. As unlikely as it may seem, this area will soon become an airstrip, enabling Arco to bring in supplies and materials on small fixed-wing aircraft. Now the islanders have a new leisure activity, watching the project. At commencement of the project, the reef prevented the near approach of supply vessels. Everything the project required came ashore in small traditional boats. On an island where the bicycle is considered sophisticated transport, such a wealth of shiny new motorbikes is almost inconceivable. Piece by piece, everything is carried onto the beach. Absolutely everything. The first priority is four walls and a roof. Erstwhile boat builders are enlisted as carpenters, and even the fishermen prefer a day's wages on the project to long and sometimes unproductive days at sea. At its peak, the project will employ approximately 400 islanders in various capacities. Other workers from Java and the surrounding islands who come to complete the workforce will be housed in the camp. Earth moving equipment brought in by shallow draft barges began the work of preparing the site. An immediate priority was a port facility. Utilizing a backhoe as a dredge, work began on deepening the harbor and building up a causeway to reach beyond the boundary of the reef. Eventually, ships and barges will dock here, bringing the larger components required to build the Pagrunen project. Dead coral is bad for agriculture, but excellent for building. These nodes are broken up and cleared from the project area and hauled to the causeway site where they are crushed, leveled, and used as fill. The causeway grows rapidly. There is plenty of coral fill. When the dust has settled, the site is ready for construction to begin. Due to the lack of island infrastructure and Arco's commitment to have as positive an impact here as possible, most of the fabrication for this project will take place elsewhere. The basic preparation is vital. The original plan called for concrete bricks to be imported onto the island for the construction of foundations and support structures. To Arco's surprise, it proved an advantage in terms of both cost and quality control to make the bricks on site. As the men of the Grumen acquire these skills, will village architecture undergo a change? The contractors also set up an in-situ concrete plant. Foundations for the prefabricated modules and plant buildings 
quickly spread across the project area. By 1991, the foundations were in place for most of the modules and the formwork for two condensate tanks was complete. Once the site was cleared, construction of the airstrip proceeded rapidly. Until it is completed, air travel will be limited to helicopter flights staged from Bali, restricting the amount of perishable supplies and passengers which can be flown in. In some ways, this feature of the project alone will revolutionize the way the people of Pagrun view their island, the Republic of Indonesia, and the world beyond. Previously, travel to Surabaya took days by local boat. Now it is possible to land at an international air terminal within an hour. Pagrun has joined the global village. As work on the island continued, exploration and development of the gas field moved forward. The reef surrounding the island was in decline. Arco looked for a solution and found it in discarded automobile tires. Positioned and sunk in 1992, they provide a surface for marine plants to cling to, havens and feeding grounds for fish that disappeared as the reef grew smaller. Just a year later, the island's fishermen harvested tuna, snapper, and mackerel as the marine ecosystem accepted Arco's artificial reef. At the same time, Arco initiated a program to track marine pollutants, which might result from offshore drilling, construction on the island, and increased marine traffic in its vicinity. Divers installed and monitored sediment collectors on the ocean floor and periodically returned to remove samples and record changes in conditions. More sophisticated testing of samples takes place in these laboratories in Bogor, south of Jakarta in the Sunda Highlands. Another far-reaching project that was undertaken was to collect Pagrun's indigenous plants and the soils in which they normally grow and bring here the plants will be cultured so that when construction is complete in 1993 the area can be re-landscaped to its original appearance without waiting for nature to cover the traces left by man. Arco will leave the island even greener than they found it. Back on the island, environmental measures are in place to safeguard the quality of the island's water supply. Pagrunan's water table is exceptionally shallow and the islanders depend on a handful of wells scattered over the island. Corruption of any one of these would be catastrophic for the villagers. The quality of seawater is also closely watched and many tests can be carried out on site. In order to avoid deterioration of ground and marine water quality, ARCO installed a sewage treatment plant and all wastewater is treated before it is discharged through an outfall line 15 meters below sea level. And in order not to compete with the villagers for the scarce water supply, a reverse osmosis plant was installed to convert seawater into drinking water. On the northwest coast of Java, the Pagrunan project was in another phase. Here in Chilagon, Arco contracted the fabrication of the modules, which will comprise the gas processing facilities at Pagrunan. The plant will consist of two gas processing trains. In order to protect the rural nature of Pagrunan and its community, no heavy manufacturing will take place on the island. Instead, the modules required by the plant, including storage tanks, 
the inlet cooler and separator, contactor tower, heat exchanger and glycol regenerator will be manufactured here, distributing the benefits of the Pagunan project throughout the Indonesian archipelago. When the modules for each of these elements is complete, it is carefully moved from the fabrication yard to a waiting barge onto which it will be loaded and towed to Pagrun and Basar. At about the same period, a strange ceremony was taking place on the Indonesian island of Batam, only slightly larger than Pagrunan. Batam has been earmarked for industrial development. Here the single point mooring buoy, to which the condensate pipeline will reach, and from which ships will load their cargoes, is being christened and launched in unique style. As the project moved forward, on Pagrunan, in Chilagan, and on Batam, another vital link was being completed. The Trans-Java Gas Pipeline to bring Pagrunan gas to East Java was under construction. A 28-inch pipeline spanning 430 kilometers, 360 of them along the ocean floor, links Arco Indonesia's production-sharing contract area with the domestic market it will supply. In the past, PSC partners have concentrated on developing export products, oil and liquefied natural gas. The Pagrunan project will be the first major project by a production sharing contractor to supply domestic customers with gas, freeing more of Indonesia's oil resources for export. As 1992 progressed, the physical plant of the Pagrunan project took form. One by one, the modules arrived after their long journey from West Java and were installed immediately, day or night. After several days at sea, the single buoy mooring arriving from Batam was anchored and connected to the 2.5 kilometer condensate loading line. Arco early instituted a policy of separating project staff from the island community. But such a membrane between cultures cannot be impermeable. Over 400 islanders are employed here. Each day they leave the project plant and return to their homes in the village. A journey through time, from an age of high technology to a traditional lifestyle, which cannot help but be changed by the experiences of the working day and the increase in income and affluence. The project employees from Pagrun and Basar live between parallel worlds. With the airstrip complete, the outside world inevitably arrives. Visitors from Pertamina, the government of East Java and from Arco, periodically landed to inspect progress and learn about steps taken to protect the environment and the community development program underway. This program, commenced at the beginning of the project, has as its goal sustainable and culturally sensitive improvements in the standard of living on Pagrun and Basar.
It comprises new schools, including a junior high school, new teacher housing, repair and upgrading of the government clinic, the establishment of island cooperatives, the building of an ice factory and cold storage facility, and improvements to the mosque and Badarasa, or Muslim school, along with other strategies. Concurrent with community development, geologists employed advanced methods to delineate the Padrunan gas field from trucks whose sonic pulses are measured using geophones and from offshore ships trailing sonar streamers. The project rolled on into 1993. By the middle of 1993, the Pagrunin project is nearly complete. These trains include a gas inlet cooler, into which raw gas flows from two drill sites, which cools the gas before sending it on to an inlet separator, where the cooled gas and liquids are separated. From there, the gas will travel through a heat exchanger to a glycol contactor tower where the water is removed. The dried gas is cooled again and fed into a low temperature separator for the final removal of hydrocarbons. The gas will then enter the pipeline to be sent to customers. The cold storage facility is in operation and the island cooperative assures fishermen of regulated and fair prices for their catch. Refrigeration allows islanders to catch a wider variety of fish, not just the pelagic species suitable for salting and drying. They can keep their catches fresh and hold them for sales at the right time. Two of the new school buildings are complete and the complex is equipped with a satellite dish. The government clinic has been rebuilt and its facilities upgraded. The children of Pagrun and Basar will have a healthier future. This is reinforced by an improved supply of safe drinking water. The 21st century seems already to have arrived at the top of Gunung Manjong on West Kangian Island. Installing a remote satellite station there on a peak commanding a panoramic sweep of the Kangian group of islands, Arco has created a sophisticated telecommunications center for Pagrunan Besar, enabling digital telephone communication uplinked to Indonesia's satellite system. Communications within the field are handled by a digital microwave system. The nerve center of the plant is a distributed control system, integrating all process controls, plus fire and safety systems under a single computerized control center. The plant is designed with a three fails and save philosophy. A fiber optics based local area network links all facilities with online status information. An on-site laboratory facility monitors product quality. As the date of commissioning approaches, there is also intense activity at the other end of this pipeline, which will carry Pagrunan gas 420 kilometers away at pressures up to 1800 PSIG. The users of Pagrunan gas are preparing their facilities to receive it. The gas comes ashore at the onshore receiving facility at Porong. The state gas distributor, Perum Gas Nagara or PGN, will supply gas for industrial customers. Petrochemia Gresik will receive Pagrunan gas to use as feedstock for fertilizer and other commercial byproducts. The state electricity company, TLN, will use Pagrunan gas to power a 1500 megawatt electrical generating plant. 
Based on advanced combined cycle technology, a dual-level use of the gas recovers almost 100% of the caloric content of the gas. Compared to conventional methods, where up to 25% of the heat produced by burning gas is lost. The PLM plant at Dresseek will burn gas to drive these gas turbines to produce electricity, then capture and use the exhaust heat from the process to create steam to drive a second set of turbines. These advanced techniques will be used to keep the social and industrial development of East Java powered up. On Friday the 4th of March 1994, the villagers gathered as usual for prayers in a renovated mosque which is the pride of their village. As they reflected on their lives since the coming of change, the improvements in conditions on the island stood out. For young and old, life is good on Bagrun and Basar. The next morning, dressed in their best, selected representatives of the people of Bagrunen enjoyed a novel experience. They boarded a plane at the airport on their own island to fly to East Java. Some had been away before. Those who made the Hajj had been on aircraft, but only after a sea journey to Surabaya. As the plane lifts off, the people of Pagrunan see their island from the air for the first time. On this day in March, the attention of the President of Indonesia and many high officials is fixed closely on little Pagrunan Basar. Its people have come here to meet their President face to face, to speak with him and share a special moment in their lives and in the future of gas development for Indonesia. <laughs> At the press of a button, the completed project is commissioned and Bagrun and gas flows into Porong. Time will be the final jury on the success of the Pagrunan gas project. An early oil buccaneer once said, the meat shall inherit the earth, but not the mineral rights. Yet here on Pagrunan Basar, these islanders, whose ancestors were buccaneers of the seas, who had lived for almost a century without real change, have inherited a brighter future through what Pertamina and Argo have created on their island. What have these years meant to the people of Pagrun and Basar? At its peak, the project employed 400 islanders, and they will still be preferred for employment in the operating plant wherever possible. They walked away from boat building to construct housing, offices, and clinics. They left their fishing nets to triangulate survey points or drive road-making machines. By island standards, they have become rich. Pagrun Basar occupies just 3.5 square kilometers of the Earth's crust. But as the people of Arco, Indonesia, assisted in the birth of the Pagrunan field, it became their world for more than three years. Like the islanders, they have seen it in its moods, as the seasons have passed over it. Seasons of rain and seasons of drought seasons to fast and seasons of feasting. For those who have spent three years bringing the Pagrunan gas project on stream, expatriate and Indonesian alike, it has been a season of change. <laughs>